Brandon Fott is finally coming up to pitch for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's one of the most anticipated prospect starting pitchers that will debut this season. So let's dig into his mix, his velocity, his shapes, what he throws, and also what some of the issues are that he might run into in his repertoire. Fott is primarily a three pitch guy, fastball slider changeup. He also mixes in an occasional curveball, but I'm gonna focus on those three primary offerings. He's primarily fastball changeup to lefties and fastball slider to righties, but he does throw all four pitches to each handedness of hitter. First thing that jumps off the page here, if you're analyzing a pitcher like Fott, is that his velocity is below the major league average on a couple of his pitches. 94 is probably the threshold you wanna get over for a fastball of any kind. Uh, to see performance jump and 85 miles per hour is probably that threshold for sliders to hop over to be a good bet unless you're creating a ton of lateral break. Fod is a bit below these two thresholds, but let's talk about how much that really matters at all to his profile. Let's start with this fastball shape and to properly analyze that, what we have to do is look at some of the few markers we have on the data side for how he moves. So he's six foot four, 220, he's a pretty big guy. The key thing in his profile is that he extends down the mound pretty far. So he lands six feet, nine inches from the mound, which would put him inside the 78th percentile for pitchers in Major League Baseball. Now, does extension matter? That's actually a really nuanced question. I'm not gonna dig into too much, but the key thing that you hear is a, a kind of two competing camps. A lot of people who think that it really matters a ton, that perceived velocity has a ton of impact. And then there's others, more of the modern coaches often think that it really only matters for the guys inside say the 95th or 98th percentile. This would be guys like Logan Gilbert or Jordan Romano or anybody in that tier who's getting seven plus feet down the mound. That's where it matters for. Maybe a guy like Fott, it matters subtly, but most people would probably say it doesn't matter a ton. And I think it's important to call out his extension because his fastball shape is kind of just okay. He averages about 14.6 inches of vertical break or ride or carry or whatever you want to call it, which for his release height is actually a little bit below average. You want something around 16 inches at least, depending on what your release height is. So he doesn't get behind the ball particularly well, and we can infer that by looking at this vertical movement number on his four seam fastball. And as a result, again, the shape is just kind of fine. That lower release height allows it to flat out a little bit at the top of the zone, but it's not enough to become a plus pitch. Stuff Plus says this is an 84 fastball where the league average is 100. So this is implying that his fastball is about 16% below the major league average fastball in his velocity bucket. Is this a death sentence? I don't think so, but I, I do really think it becomes more of an execution based pitch for him. Pitchers who don't have strong stuff plus on their fastballs just have less margin for error. If it's over the play, it's gonna get hit harder and cause more damage on average than a pitch that has better shape, but is in the exact same spot. And you could see this in his minor league home run rates. He's consistently been above one home run per nine. I know he pitches in a hitter friendly environment, but even if you control for that, he's probably still gonna give up home runs around the major league average or worse until he maybe makes some command strides or improves the fastball shape a bit, which is totally possible given that he's only 24 years old. But this year in particular, his fastball location has been a bit off. He's just letting it eat middle. And I don't think the shape again is good enough to do that. And the result has been about two home runs per nine, around two home runs per nine in AAA, which is pretty high relative to his career average. So it kind of seems like his location is just a bit off. And you could see that last year to this year in a comparison of left-handed hitters to right-handed hitters. And they, again, this is just emphasizing our point that that location might be a little less stable in a given pitcher year to year. And I personally hypothesize that's the case for younger pitchers and a guy like Fott. Moving over to his slider, this is his best pitch. It's 84 miles per hour with seven inches of vertical break or what I often call lift in relation to breaking balls. And it has 10 inches of sweep or glove side movement. It generated about a 50% swing and miss rate at AAA this year, which is nearly 20 percentage points more than the league average, which is generally around 30 to 33%, depending on that particular slider shape. His slider sits in a subtype of sweeping sliders where you would call it a hand of God slider, which is absolutely hilarious. I love the name but it essentially just means that the slider has an inordinate amount of lift to it. The average sweeping slider has somewhere around two inches of that vertical break or lift. And as I mentioned, Fox slider has five inches more than that at seven inches of vertical break. What this causes is a lot of fly balls, but also a lot of swings underneath the pitch where you're usually swinging over a typical breaking ball if it's buried, say down and away from a right-handed pitch to a right-handed hitter. Hand of God sliders are only like 1% of all sliders in Major League Baseball and they usually have greater than six inches of that vertical break 
and greater than eight inches of that sweep. That subtype is from Chris Langham of Driveline Baseball, who's a great follow on Twitter. Stuff Plus has this pitch at a 111, which means it's 11% better than the major league average breaking ball. It's his best pitch again. He hammers it to right-handed hitters, and they're going to have a tough time with it at the major league level. Fox changeup is also a pretty solid pitch. The characteristics we're looking for with changeups, and I've hit on this in other videos before, is the drop separation between a pitcher's primary fastball and a changeup, and the velocity separation between a pitcher's primary fastball and the changeup. The best changeups for swing and miss in the zone are those which don't actually separate much on the velocity side of things, say around only seven miles per hour or less, and do drop a lot more than the pitcher's primary fastball, let's say greater than 10 inches or right around 10 inches. Foch changeup is right on both of these marks. It's about seven miles per hour slower than his forcing fastball, and it separates by 11 inches of that vertical break, of that drop. And he's generated a 40% swing and miss rate on the pitch in AAA this year, where the league average is around 30 to 32% for the average changeup. Stuff Plus has this right at 101 for pitch quality, so basically a major league average changeup. That might be underwhelming, and I actually think it's pretty impressive because Stuff models generally don't like changeups too much at all. Um, but because of, again, that, that not a huge difference in separation of velocity, while he creates a good amount of drop is the key differentiator here that I think grades this pitch out to an average pitch that I would bet based on if he sells it, arm speed and some other things, maybe has it grayed out even better than that and play above the 101 stuff plus has given it. So in sum, with a guy like Brandon Fott, what we're looking at is a pitcher that I think just has to rely more on his secondary pitches to be successful at the major league level. This is a product of his hand of God slider being a very good pitch, his changeup being a very good pitch, and his forcing fastball being a below average pitch. And the thing I really want you to take away from this video is just that with the lack of stuff plus on a forcing fastball, it becomes more execution dependent. And given the fact that we don't really have a ton of objective location data, I showed you the plots earlier about how I think that that fastball has drifted more into the zone in 2023 relative to 2022 at the AAA level for a guy like Fott. But that's just eyeballing it. I don't necessarily have optimal location data or anything objective that can tell us that maybe he has below average command now where he had average command in the past. I'm betting he's a guy that comes up, relies on his secondaries, and ends up with average to above average command. It's just that even with that average to above average command, because of the below average quality of the four seam fastball, despite the extension and some of the other things we talk about, the margin for error is just smaller. He's not gonna be able to let that thing eat over the middle of the zone. Like a guy like Mason Miller, who we talked about in the past in a video who has really strong stuff plus and pretty much could just throw that pitch middle middle. I think he's gonna get hitters out. So that fastball is the key thing I think to watch for a guy like Brandon Fott. I'm really curious in his long-term trajectory where the fastball usage goes. I imagine he's gonna come out of the gate, try to establish the pitch, maybe hang it around 45 to 55% in terms of usage. But over time, I'm curious as to whether both the changeup and the slider just grade out of so much better pitches in the zone and he's able to land them in the zone enough such that teams just, uh, the Diamondbacks specifically, excuse me, have him just throwing those pitches a ton. I'd be curious to see if the fastball ever drops below, say 40%, goes down to 35%, and he becomes like a third, a third, a third pitcher where he's really relying on those secondary pitches. It's that, or maybe the fastball quality improves or the location on that pitch is so strong at the major league level that it's able to kind of play above that below average quality. Let me know in the comments below what you think of a guy like Brandon Fott, and thank you for watching this video.